It is finally rotary time. Those of you who follow us on Instagram have been really ready for this thing. This is a 1975 Wankel rotary engine made by Saks. It's basically the first rotary engine to ever go on a motorcycle. So it's on the Hercules W2000. They made 1,500 of these. Um, this one is one of like 300 with this like direct oil injection system. So this is a very, very rare engine. We picked it up on Craigslist for $750 and we are going to make a rotary shifter go-kart out of it, if we can get it running. All right guys, I really didn't want to take this engine completely apart, but I think it's going to have to happen. Let's see if we can get this to work. Now, I don't know if we'd be able to get this thing clean enough while the engine's together. So what I think I'm going to do is, so basically this is all transmission and then this is the rotary itself. It seems like there's only these four studs that hold it together. So I think I'm gonna unbolt this case, loosen these bolts and take the transmission off and I'm gonna go from there. Okay, this is very promising. The inside of this looks a mat, like very, very clean. This is very reassuring because I have a feeling that all, the only bat, like crappiness inside of here has to do with um, just like all the stuff that improper storage led to. So last, there's one more holding the transmission together and then it'll be separated. Looks like I'm gonna have to go a quarter turn at a time on this one. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, wow. It's like a little differential. Crap, I do not want to take this apart. This is more for my personal reference than anything, but this is easy because it's just a key shaft. I just had to pull on it a little bit. Did not take that much force, just slid out. Um, so now I just need to undo the snap ring. So it was this shaft, this, or bent, wash it out as bent to keep this nut on, and that's about it. So now it's time. See this part? I honestly have no idea how many parts are gonna be in this like rotary resurrection series. Because you can't really start building a rotary cart until we have a running engine. Wow, okay. There's some major crust in here. This is how the puller was designed. But I just used some long screws and just kind of put them in and now if it wants to work with us and pull on it and get it off. Then after this, we undo all these little, little bolts and we are looking at the rotor. So now we're unbolting the case. How does it feel? Like? It feels all right. I mean, they don't feel too bad. Oh wait, this, one's a, this one goes all the way through. That's why it feels right. Oh wow. Oh shoot, all of them go all the way through. Hmm. Those are some sketchy bolts. That's long. Okay, well. Alright, well let's soak all these in PV Blaster and just get a wrench and try to do it. Get that. Wow, that's a <laughs> huge rotor. Dang. Dude, it's clean on the, like, the surface is like butter. 
I'm so glad we tore this apart. Yeah, this actually looks really solid. Look at the apex seals too, man. And the cylinder walls, I don't know if they're called cylinders, but whatever. The, the walls look. Look at that. Bare, oh, barely any baby. little marks. I mean, look at this surface. It's got like some marks, and then yeah, I guess it was bit. sitting right there maybe when it was in the shed. But this is way clear. So out. this is what we're. This is what I was concerned about when I was cranking it over. I was All this. Carbon. Yeah. Burning the oil too. So I think we just clean all of this off. Cause all of this, this is hard. So when this gets dislodged from here, it can just, especially after sitting, that's what happens. It sits with the gas and then just becomes into kind of these little pebbles. And when they get scraped up against here, that's when we score the inside of here. So time to spend a couple hours cleaning. Okay, so we were just kind of looking at this, and we it wrote the um, rotor had rotated a little bit around, and we saw that some of the carbon buildup had made some little score marks on top of the cylinder, and we're just not sure that we're going to be able to get everything out with the rotor like still in here. So we're just going to take the rotor out, and then we'll also be able to clean all the surfaces much better. So right now we're just taking out the apex seals, cleaning everything out really well. Um, I don't know if we filmed taking the rotor off. Uh, I did find there's a SAC, there's a SAC 303 motor that was on snowmobiles. It's very similar to this, and it tells you it has like it has a write up about like the proper procedure for installing the rotor, so we can go through that. Sweet. So now we can really clean everything. We're just using some steel wool to brush up the ends. Um, but yeah, surfaces look pretty smooth. I don't think we're gonna touch them. I think we'll just wipe them down with this paper towel as much as we can just to get them smooth, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we have our apex seals right here, and then here's the one I just cleaned up. And it's kind of, it's got a little like flat spring in there so that it pushes up against the sides of the cylinder. So we have this one right here, which is super stuck and doesn't move at all. So it's really good that we took this out and took everything apart because if not, then this would have been like almost open kind of or like kind of like having a gap in your piston rings or something like that. Like so that um, compression would be able to leak through. Okay. okay, so we're going a little bit more in depth with this rotor rebuild. So I was looking at the uh, side seals and this one right here is the only one that was springing. All of these are just like flat and don't move at all. And so I mean right in there is just a little kind of flat spring like a bent piece of metal that pushes up on it. So I freed this one up and then we cleaned it up a little bit. So now we're also taking these little holders, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, out. So then we can get the other seized ones. Hopefully free and spring. Yeah. So we just kind of rotate these a little bit. Because I do remember when this, when I had the spark plug in and I was turning it over, it did not feel like it made very well, good compression at all. Yeah. Um, and I think that's testament of how I, I feel like the seized apex seal was the worst thing but I mean I think all of these would help it make less compression and we want every prop to work better and get into it. All right so we got a little bit of bad news I was I was actually prying very gently on this side seal and it just snapped so all these are and I mean this side's way worse too with all this rust so we're not really gonna be able to get these seals out without snapping on the pieces so for now, we're just gonna take a little bit of a break. We're gonna go search forums, try and find some uh, new side seals. We found ones that we think will work that came from a snowmobile engine. So we'll get some new ones and... Yeah, cause the three, there's a Sax 303, very similar displacement. And I'm thinking because the edges of the side seals are flat, if the rotor is generally the same shape, what we can do is just shave it down until it fits. Um, and that'll be way better than running an engine with, it probably won't even run with like, one side every single seal is stuck, other side only one is stuck. And I don't wanna score the, the inside of the cylinder with stuck side seals. Yeah. I think that's just, I think it, they, the side seals I don't think were stuck before it was stored, but after storage I think it just kinda screwed over everything, so. That's okay, it's not horrible news, I think. I think this thing can run, it just needs to yeah. So this is how all the rotary stuff sits. 
This is definitely gonna conclude part one of the engine build. I was really hoping we could get it running, but I mean, stuck side seals are just a nasty thing. So we have it soaking in some ATF. I'm gonna have my, we're going back to college for a couple weeks, but I'm gonna have my dad flip this rotor over every like couple days just so it can get all soaked in. We just basically oiled up every, every machine surface and let it sit here. Um, but yes, thank you guys for watching. This is awesome. I really hope we can make this rotary shifter cart happen. I think, yeah, it needs a lot of work. I'm gonna order those seals, those side seals. Apex seals seem to be perfectly fine, but I have a feeling that if we can get some nice side seals in there that actually spring out and aren't seized, and we can salvage that rotor and get the, actually get those side seals out without messing too much up, we're gonna be good to go. So let us know what you think. Give a thumbs up for rotary shifter cart engines, because guys, I mean, it's a rotor shifter cart.